Rangers. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I'm very excited to have with me Allie Donnelly, and she is an apprentice electrician and panel builder at DCA Controls. And I'm looking forward to this interview because when I met Allie and we got to talk offline to get prepared for this, her energy is just through the roof. I'm excited. She's young. She's eager. She's excited to be in this industry, and this is what we're looking for. So, Allie, how are you doing today? I am great, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. It is truly an honor to be on your show today. I am just over the moon. <laughs> well, we're over the moon to have you. I, mean, I tell you what, so when we when we thought about Eco SY and putting it out there and telling the stories to the people that, that are listeners and try to inspire the next generation, you were kind of the avatar where we were targeting, right? We wanted to get to reach your, your generation and, and so excited to have you on today and sharing your story. So, I'm pumped up. I'm excited. And you know these hero episodes, Ali, we always kick them off with just hearing a little bit about your journey. So tell us how you got to where you are right now. Yeah, absolutely. So funny story is, is right out of high school, I attended a law program. Uh, I thought what I wanted to do was be a lawyer. And I had like scoped my whole high school off being a lawyer. And the second I was in it, I realized, unfortunately, it really wasn't what I wanted to do. So my mom is a nuclear operator and a power engineer. So she actually took me to Skills Ontario and Women in Trades events. And I'm not going to lie, it wasn't until two or three events until I really found what I wanted to do. But I thought that electrical would be challenging. It would be fun. And I am terrified of electrical, which I feel like is a really good balance to have because you have like that safe kind of respect for it. So... I'm really thankful that I switched to trades because if you told me two years ago I would be an apprentice electrician, I would tell you absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I am curious. So, first of all, hats off to your mom for being intentional and taking you to some of these events. What was the event that triggered it? Like you said you went to several and then all of a sudden you had that aha moment. So was there a specific event or opportunity that you were like, oh, that's what I want to do? Yeah, absolutely. So at Skills Ontario, what they have is you can go in and you can change a tire. You could solder a pipe. You could go in and do a little bit of welding. It wasn't until I actually started stripping and crimping the wires and putting them all together and seeing the aftermath. Like, wow, that is gorgeous. That looks amazing. And it's going to run a whole factory. That is so neat. So I think that was the biggest kicker for me was having, like I said, that safe kind of respect for it, being scared of it. But at the same time, loving how it looks very cool now how old were you when you were at those events i was 18 okay so you were so you were just done high school or still a senior so i actually graduated at 17 i took the law program for a year dropped out when i was 18 and then from 18 to 20 i attended these events just kind of figuring out what i really wanted to do because i'm not gonna lie i did want to be a plumber and I chose not to be a plumber, actually, because a lot of people in my family are in trades and nobody in my family is in electrical. So I was like, hmm, I'm going to do something different. <laughs> well, good for you. That is, that is, that's really cool. So now you're at DCA Controls, so you're an apprentice and a panel yep. builder. So, you know, what's, what's your day-to-day looking like now? So right now, like today I came in this morning and typically you would have like a customer layout come in, depending, it could be one panel, it could be 12 panels, you never really know. So typically we get customer layouts since we make custom panels. So we start designing, like we get the back plate, we get the enclosure. So the back plate is just the big white board that you see on LinkedIn all the time that I post. And then you put on the Panduit, which the wire runs through, you put on the DIN rail, which the devices get mounted to, and then you'd start wiring. Right. So, I mean, you literally, you're starting with a blank canvas, and it's, it sounds like in your in your eyes, you like the art aspect of it. You like to see it all come together. Absolutely. I find that women really like the fine details of things and that I can make it look a little bit prettier than the boys sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely can. I'll tell you what, one thing that jumped out to me, Allie, when, once we connected is, you are uh, posting so many cool pictures out there that are connecting engineering topics, uh, you know, panel builder type of topics. So, you know, hats off to you. I mean, when did you start getting into that? Thank you. Thank you so much for that. It was actually, I started on LinkedIn probably about in April and I had maybe 20 followers. It really wasn't working well for me and I didn't really know where to go from there. So I left 
go for a little bit, started working in the field. And then I tried it again because I kept hearing people say LinkedIn, do you have LinkedIn? You should get on LinkedIn. So I was like, okay, it's being burned in my brain. Let's try it again. So I went back, we tried it again. And lo and behold, I'm at 2,500 followers. I'm here speaking to you. I've met just the most amazing people. It was actually um, Alicia Gilpin who really helped motivate me. She is such an inspiration. Just all the things that she shares that really benefit all the people that follow her, like whether it be something like, this is how you properly wire up a PLC to, this is what I have built at my home right now. Like I just thought she was so cool and I just wanted to get on board with her and see if I could keep up. Now, how'd you find her? She is, um, she, I found her on LinkedIn. Okay. So it was actually, I worked for um, a bigger corporation before and a few people had followed her and reposted her work. So that's actually how I found her was through some reshared posts. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So I'm, I'm curious, are you following her? And I, and it sounds like you know she's providing you a lot of inspiration, which I think you're providing a lot of inspiration to people out there as well. How about the the whole mentorship area? Have you had you have you found a good mentor yet? And if so, you know what what are they doing to help you grow in your career? Absolutely. So I have to give hats off to my mom. Like I would absolutely not be sitting in the position where I am without her today. She has worked her absolute butt off. She was a single mom who provided for two children her whole life. And from the second that I was three years old, she was making sure that we were, she worked for Ontario power generation and Bruce power. Okay. So um, we would go to parades, like literally from the second I was little, we would be going to parades for Ontario power generation. Like she was making sure that we were always at events. We were always around trades. And then my brother, he got into welding fitting. He's a mechanical engineer and a millwright. And he welded my mom a little stock car. So honestly, like my mom is just amazing. She is a go getter. She works extremely hard and she's a huge voice for women in trades and she just retired and she's a huge pressure is like all the boomers are retiring Allie. You really got to get out there. So I'm trying just as hard as she is to push it on me to push it on others. Absolutely. It sounds like you definitely have a phenomenal mentor with your mom. Hats off to her. Maybe we need to get her on eco. That's why <laughs> let her share some stories. <laughs> Great advice. She's like aunt Karen to everyone. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So you got the you ha you have the mentors going and I'm curious from the from DCA controls and what you're seeing, you know, what's changing? What's what what's in what let me think about this question. What is challenging DCA controls right now that you're seeing, you know, because industry is changing a lot, right? Supply chains impacting everybody. Just curious what what's what's coming across your plate right now? So I'd say there's two massive things to touch on. I would say the part shortages that we're all kind of suffering and facing. And like I just mentioned before, boomers retiring. Like if we don't have people who are my age, the millennials really getting out there and wanting to work with their hands and taking the places of their parents, we're not going to have industrial or construction or anybody. We're not going to have Nobody's going to be able to build houses. We're not going to have any electricity. The only people that will be fine will be Mennonites. <laughs> That's right. So great point. I hear it all the time about the, the retirements, the skills gap, you know, and, and the workforce attrition. What do we do about that, Alan? Because, I mean, you got excited. You're pumped up. You're you're out there. You thank the thank goodness you didn't go to law path because you're, you're on this path now. What do we need to do to, to actually get some buzz going and get people excited about it? I'd say do more of like post your work, post the before and after pictures. Like you said, I get a blank canvas and by the end of it, there could be anywhere from 500 to a thousand wires. And like I said, it was Alicia really posting her work or like these amazing women that I see welding these stingrays and these dinosaurs and just these beautiful, beautiful things or all of these amazing tradespeople who are working on all these Corvettes or these Denali's like there's just so much out there there's over a hundred trades and like you don't just have to pick one pick two pick three like you could be any i think it's a really really amazing feeling to take a step back and be like wow i did that yeah now how about for that that's what you're going to do you know to, to to promote but how about advice for the next generation so say i'm a high schooler or maybe even a middle schooler right now and yeah. you were going to give them advice to to start following that's going to 
put them on a on a path that you feel will be you know fulfilling and successful like you're on right now what are you telling yeah. them make sure that you choose something that makes you happy like you have to in a trade you have to work towards a, cif- or a certificate there's a lot of hours so it's not just you're picking a trade and that's that you're licensed so persevere don't be discouraged never give up like you're going to be in this for the next 30 to 40 years of your life so make sure that it's something that you like and male female big small green or purple like there's a fit for everybody here believe it or not and I find like doing a lot of the posting that I've been doing of my work and just showing people how amazing trades actually are. I've had an outpour of people reach out and just be like, look, I don't like nursing. I don't like what I'm doing. What advice can you give me? And that would be the best advice I could give is to just go for it. Right. And don't act like, you, yeah, you might pick a trade that you don't like, so go and find another one. That's true. That's true. So, I mean, that, that's, that's great advice. I mean, we're, where should they be following? Do they need to? So if you're a high schooler, do you need to yeah. be getting on LinkedIn to follow people like you? I mean, where, where should they start really investing time to, to get better and to learn? Absolutely. I think you should be building an image from the second you get out of high school for yourself, because that's really going to help you in your career. And knowing people is huge. Knowing people in trades. Like once I got into trades, I found like it was a huge, huge family. Like I could go and wire someone's basement and they're going to come and help me with my toilet or they're going to come and help me with my shower. So not only build an image for yourself and get out there, but to also make lots of connections because there's people out there who want you to do good too. So, you know, you're speaking to yeah. the, the power of connections and I mean, you're, you're all over it because I've seen it. So many heroes we've talked to, Allie, including you, when they start walking through the success that they've had in their careers and what's got them to where they're at, it's so many times it's funny. It comes back to, I met, I met this one person at lunch and we started talking and it was just those one, those single relationships, one at a time, meaningful connections. Cause it's great to have, you know, thousands of followers, but the ones that you truly have those relationships with from what I've seen from the heroes I've talked to, that's the connections that actually, you know, build us up and make us the people we are, right? You put that so perfectly. Like, that is exactly how I feel. Like, that was just spot on, Chris. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's, what, that's what we're here for. You know, we're here to serve. So that was awesome. So I am curious, too, you know, around things that you enjoy doing at work. Like, when you're, you always have this smile on your face. I love it. And so I'm curious, what makes you the happiest at work? When, when do you have that moment of joy? What are you doing? I think it'd be the people around me. Like not only making sure that you're doing something you love, but making sure that you're at a company that you love as well. Like I, if I do something and I mess up, the boys that I work with are here to help show me a way that's not only going to work for me, but it's going to make it more efficient in the future. Like, Thankfully, we kind of have a nice split here. There's some apprentices and then some journeymen. So there's a lot of guidance here. And I think that's what you really need is not someone to take your hand and spoon feed you necessarily, but to just show you like there's a thousand different ways to do this. You don't need to throw a screwdriver after one. (laughs) That's right. Now, I am curious from from your standpoint, you never it doesn't sound like you were ever turned off by the electrical world but there are some people that are they just they may think you know they have these perceptions in their brain right of of what a, an apprentice electrician and panel builder is you know is there any any stigmas out there that are just wrong that you just want to just say you know what you guys may think this is what we do but this is what we actually do so just curious on your take there well i mean like i think it's funny because being an electrician we control the power right so as much want to knock us we're really the reason that your wi-fi is running your bathroom fans are running the reason all your lights are running in your house the reason that your kitchen light isn't turning on at the same time as your room light so i get it and i know that a lot of people like to knock electricians for not cleaning up after themselves but i think that's what the good thing about all of us apprentices coming in is that we can change this image of oh, you're a panel builder. Oh, you're an electrician. Like, yeah, I'm an electrician, but I'm working with live electricity to make sure that you can be safe. So I think there's a lot more to it. It's kind of like how people look at landscaping. Like, oh, they're just cutting grass. No, that's an art. That is an absolute art. And it takes skill to do that. So I think everybody wants to judge until they're in your shoes. And if any of those people had to come in and read a 52 page schematic, 
they'd be out the door faster than they walked in. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you what, Allie, you are preaching, girl. I love it. I love it. So uh, I'm curious. So you're, you're a new apprentice electrician panel builder. I've never asked this before. What's the coolest tool in your tool bag? The coolest tool in my tool bag, my fluke multimeter from John Kirby. Okay. <laughs> Hands down. That is the coolest thing I had. So the other day it has like a little volt alert on it. So I have like my laptop cord plugged in right here. Okay. And uh, over to the meter and when you have anything plugged in instead of having like the little device that you would typically have to check if there's voltage running i can't think of the name right now i'm sorry that's awful but yeah i walked over and it was showing me that there is power and as long as you're setting the meter to the right things like it does everything for you it is the coolest thing i think i've ever owned and will ever own and also my little engraver to engrave tools it's like a little tattoo gun and i didn't even know they existed it is so neat that is cool so do you actually have like a a workstation or do you have a bag i mean how how is your is your stuff mobile or is it kind of like a a toolbox type area so typically like you really don't know if you're going to be in the shop or in the field so i most of my tools so my harness my hard hat my nice tool bag with all my weira screwdrivers in it and yeah my multimeter uh we take our brady labelers everywhere so that if anything needs device tags or wire tags we can just quickly pop them on but yeah i'd say pretty mobile just make sure that you have everything on you even my little band saw my impact gun my drill <laughs> i hear you You could do it all so what's give me a highlight what's the, one of the coolest things you've done so far got i gotta know this from you probably honestly one of them was obviously being on this podcast And two, I was taken on a job in Toronto and I got to see the Sky Dome get wired. So like when it opens up for like the Jays games and stuff like that. So I wasn't able to work on it, but I was able to go with the electrician who did that work. And that hands down, I don't think I'll ever get that experience again. Like that was just so, so neat. And next door to us, we have a scaffolding company and um, I've always wanted to learn how to drive heavy equipment and they've been training me lately. Oh yeah. So what, what are you driving? So lately it's just been the Bobcat and like the actual scaffolding machine. I don't know the big names of them. We just call her Ethel, but um, (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to take a picture of it and send it to you. Cause like I said, I'm not sure the names, but I don't think I'll ever get this experience again. Like just having someone who's a scaffolder next door and he's like, Hey, you want to learn how to drive them? Let's get in the parking lot and learn how to drive them. Like that's the cool thing about trades is that if you know the right people, you're going to be able to get your foot in the door and have a great life. You got that right. I mean, that's, you got to send us a picture. I want to see what Ethel looks like because I got to figure out what piece of yeah. equipment this is. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing: if you're listening right now, if you if you're just doing audio only, the passion is coming through your speaker. I mean, Allie is a phenomenal. So, Allie, let's shift a little bit. I want to learn a little bit about you outside of your fluke multimeter. Okay. It sounds good. <laughs> so, what do you enjoy doing for fun? What are some hobbies you got? I love being outside. Oh my gosh, I could be outside all day. I love four wheeling. I love snowmobiling. I actually, um, one of the guys I work with, he's planning on teaching me how to snowboard this year. So I'm really excited for that. So yeah, just anything outside. And I live in Hamilton, which is the waterfall capital of the world. So I've been actually traveling to all the waterfalls lately and it's just been breathtaking. What's the coolest one you've been to? Definitely Webster Falls so far, just because like you can actually get in the water there when you go in the summer. And if you go, I'd say go anywhere from 6 to 8 p.m. because then people aren't bringing their families there and you can actually just kind of take it in and enjoy the nature and everything without being screamed at. So <laughs> definitely go later on. <laughs> I agree. So you're out, you're an outdoors girl. So are you camping? What are you doing outside? What do you, what do you enjoy doing? I mean, are you just, or just in the woods? Oh, we're like, if I'm going camping, we're going camping, not glamping. Like we're not going to have a trailer. We're going to have the tent. We're sleeping on the dirt with our sleeping bags and we're going to bring everything that we need to bring. You want craft dinner? You want steak? Well, we're going to cook that on fire. So I think that I'm really lucky in the sense that my mom lives in the country and my dad lives in the city. So I've got to see both sides of kind of what it's like. So to live in a town of a population 2000 and to know everybody and to live in a city with over 20,000 and to see different people every day. Like I'm, I'm really thankful. That is very cool. Now who was camping with you? Was that your mom thing? Is that more of your dad thing or is it both? Just curious. 
So my mom and I love to camp. The last place we went to was Algonquin Park and uh, she has five and a half acres. So if we can't get to like any of the big parks that we want to get to in Ontario, then we usually just pitch a tent in the back or like the backyard. We just burn the garbage and stuff like that because we're allowed to in the country in Canada. It's not illegal here in case anybody bring. And yeah, we just chill with the dogs and have a nice little night. That is so cool. Now you're, fun stuff. Now I'm with you. We do we do the, the the camping. We don't do the glamping either. We're actually in a tent. You know, we have fun with the girls. We love doing that. We we try to hit the uh, you know the 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 parks around North Carolina. But uh, it sounds like you got some amazing views up there that you're having some fun with. I would definitely like to swap views. You should come check it on. T- Come check out North Carolina because I've heard it's just beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. We're, we're recording this in November. It's beautiful out, outside. The, the leaves have been turning. If you get a chance to go to the mountains and things like that, it's just it, it's phenomenal. So you've mentioned your mom. Now, what else can you tell us about your family? We, we love learning about people's families on Eco Ask Why. Yeah, yeah. So like I had mentioned before, I have a lot of people in my family in trade. So um, my aunt is a retired power engineer. I have a cousin who is currently an electrical, or sorry, not electrical engineer, a power engineer as well. There's lots of power engineers in our family. My mom hired power engineer, nuclear operator. Um, my dad drives transport trucks. My brother is a welder fitter, mechanic, mechanical engineer, and Mel Wright. He just started his own welding and fabricated business. So I have a lot of um, trades around me. Like when I grew up, there was always parts all over our yard and different cars and scrap pieces. And a part of me was like, no, I don't want to get dirty. I don't want to do that. And you know what? I'm so glad I got rid of that and just went for it. <laughs> this is the best choice I ever did. And I, I owe it to my family and the people that I've met on LinkedIn and just yeah. everybody around me, I really do. Like, I didn't get here without help. Well, it sounds like your family, there's nothing you guys couldn't fix together. You all have some skills across the board, right? <laughs> well, that's the nice thing. Like, if uh, something happens to my mom's car, my brother can fix it. Or if he doesn't know how to fix it, my dad deals with transport trucks. So he comes and he fixes it and he helps her. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. We're um, a trades family. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Now, I am curious, what do you enjoy consuming? Your podcast, books, you know, what I'm trying. And it could be personal stuff that you just like for entertainment or stuff you're using right now to learn and grow in your career. But any anything you'd point the listeners to to start checking out that would that you find, uh, you know, joy in? Yeah, absolutely. So there's actually a few books that I had um, written down that I thought would be good. So I know that the industry standards are different because I'm in Canada. So I think that a really good one to read would be the Canadian Electrical Code. Like the just the difference between here and China and the UK. Like there, I know it seems minuscule, but it's not. Um, honestly, another thing, like there's a few podcasts that I've been listening to lately, like Megan. She is absolutely incredible podcast I would suggest definitely listening to if you have the time any of your podcasts um any LinkedIn podcast any people from the manufacturing mafia they all have a great message they all want you to do good and they all want to help so I think that's pretty amazing and um there was a few more books that I had I think it was industrial control panels um I wasn't completely sure I think it was part three okay and um electricity for the trades and then the standard textbook of electricity and then james and the giant peach <laughs> james and the giant peach <laughs> you snuck that one in moby i was not <laughs> expecting that one to fly by there and i can tell you you know I, I appreciate you sharing those i can't see me just wanting to sit down and read the canadian electric code now there may be an eco ass why listener out there that's that's down for it but <laughs> it threw me off when you said that one <laughs> Well, that's you. You also asked a few of the, of the things that I liked, and I wanted to make sure that I said my favorite adult beverage was a Caesar. Oh, well, because we, I we're, we're going to get to the lightning round. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna, we're going to go through the lightning round next. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of that, let's jump into it. You're you're there. See, this is Allie's pace. If your listeners out there, if you're not watching the uh, the, the YouTube. She's she's a fast mover, so she I got to keep up with her. So let, lightning round is going to be <laughs> us Canadians or something else, eh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So <laughs> well, let's get it started. Lightning round. You just fire away. So let's just start with your favorite food, Allie. Favorite food, poutine. Okay, 
Now, adult beverage, you already you slipped that out, but let's go there again. So my favorite adult beverage is a Caesar, which I know you guys know is a Bloody Mary. Okay, Bloody Mary. I hear you. I hear you. So what is on your nightstand right now? On my nightstand? The Canadian uh, electrical code book. <laughs> <laughs> I my journal. I'm not going to lie. I do a lot of affirmations and manifesting just to try and like, I believe that the law of attraction is huge and that if you're going to put good things out there, good things will come back to you. So my journals on my nightstand, as well as a few energy drinks i'm not gonna lie <laughs> so you're a monster energy girl okay absolutely it gets us construction people through it <laughs> <laughs> what's your uh how about your favorite app on your phone my favorite app on my phone hmm, that's a good question i play this is gonna sound silly I play Animal Crossing, so I love Animal Crossing. It's something that I've played since I was a kid when Nintendo DSs came out, and it's something that I still play. So that or Mario Kart. I love Mario Kart. <laughs> okay. Going old school. I hear you. Now, what's your uh, what's your favorite sports team? My favorite sports team? Oh, you guys aren't going to like this. Toronto Maple Leafs. That's okay. You got you to gotta <laughs> represent. represent. How about the, uh, the, uh, the Raptors? Do you watch them too or just the Maple Leafs? I just watched the Maple Leafs. Not so much a basketball fan, but I do think the Raptors are doing really good for themselves right now. Okay. What's your uh, what, what's your favorite music? My favorite music? Country music. I love Jason Aldean, Luke Combs. Oh, I would marry Dirk Bentley. Like, I, I... <laughs> well, Dirks, if you're listening, that sounded like an invitation. So I'm not sure if Dirk Bentley listens to Eco Ask Why. He should. I mean, I think he should. But, you know, there you go. Well, I house if you give me a chance that's right that's right <laughs> what's your all what how about your favorite movie my favorite movie would have to be interstellar i think that is just such a great movie and something that you can watch 12 times and not get sick of and every time you watch it you find something new that you didn't notice before okay how about uh what's a guilty pleasure for you a guilty pleasure hot sauce for hot, sure hot. hot sauce is there a particular brand Frank's Red Hot Buffalo. Red Hot Frank. Okay, it's got to be the Buffalo. Yeah. Got it, got it. Where's the coolest place you've ever been? The coolest place I've ever been? That's a good question. Um, I haven't traveled too much, so I would have to say probably Florida when I was able to actually go handpick oranges off the tree and taste how they actually tasted. That was so cool because by the time they get to Canada, they taste completely different. <laughs> Now, how about somewhere that you want to go one day that you haven't been yet? That I haven't been. I definitely want to travel uh, British Columbia and Alberta and PEI. I want to do a lot of traveling Canada before I go elsewhere. And then if I were to go elsewhere, I'd probably say Hawaii or Bora Bora. There you go. There you go. Now, last one. Dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. Oh, hands okay. down. Gotcha. <laughs> Love it. All right. Found St. Bernard, so definitely dogs. Now, you broke up. How heavy was this St. Bernard? <laughs> 235 pounds, and his name is Tiny. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> well, I have a little, my wife, oh, not, not I. My wife has a Yorkie. Maybe I can feed my, the Yorkie to Tiny. He may like him as a snack or something. <laughs> oh, my God. He's probably the size of his head. He would love that. <laughs> That's adorable. You're absolutely adorable. My mom actually, we planted a garden this year over the summer, which I suggest if you have some extra time, anybody listening to definitely plant your own beets, carrots, pumpkins. But if you have a St. Bernard, steer clear, or sorry, steer clear of the pumpkins because um, he has a weird, weird addiction to them. And we planted 12 and ended up with one. So that definitely. Crazy? That's crazy. So he was eating the pumpkins. Okay. Well, only thing, like when we get him dog toys, he breaks everything. So we have to get him horse toys. And we think that the, the pumpkin and the size of the pumpkin is just right for him. So that's the I've, I've, I have a similar experience, not for me, but my parents. They have a dog. <laughs> this year, they found out the dog is addicted to cucumbers. So <laughs> they couldn't, every time they'd go out, they had to literally wrap this thing up like, you know, grizzly bears were going to attack the group just so they could get some. Because every time they'd go out, the dog would go rip a cucumber off, take off, run across the yard, eating it while it was running. They, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so you, your, your dog's like pumpkins, ours like cucumbers. So maybe that's a Canadian-USA thing. I don't know. <laughs> it, 
U.S. dogs like cucumbers and the Canadian dogs like pumpkins. That is so cool. These three eating healthy, right? <laughs> right. They're, you know, they're 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 living, you know, the ve the veggie life. So there you go. <laughs> well, Allie, <laughs> this has been phenomenal. Love getting to know you. I know our listeners are just probably just just beaming and they're, they're they have a big smile on their face now. You know, we call it Eco Ask Why. We wrap up with the why, and it, it just really talks about, you know, what you're passionate about. So if somebody were to come up to you on the streets or come into the shop there at DCA Controls and ask you, Allie, what is your personal why? What would it be? My personal why is that everything happens for a reason. That no matter what gets thrown at you, that this is being presented to you for a reason, that it's being presented to you because you can handle it and that you don't necessarily have to react to everything, but take a step back and reflect. This is happening for a reason. The situation is being presented to you for a reason. So what are you going to do to get through it? So I think that would be the best possible advice that I have is that everything happens for a reason and to set a goal for yourself. And like I said, to not give up because it's not always going to be easy, but it sure as hell will be worth it. Got that right. Well, it's, it, that was a beautiful answer. I think this conversation it, happened for a reason. I'm no yeah. doubt you provide a ton of inspiration for people out there in alley. We wish you nothing but the best in the future. You're going to do amazing things. Remember us when, you, when you're conquering the world in electrical. Just, just remember Eco SY, and, and I wish you nothing but the best. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Like everything that you've been able to present to me and give me and just meeting you. Like I'm almost in tears right now. I can't even explain how I feel. I'm just so truly thankful. I will never forget about you guys, and I hope that – we continue to carry on in the future, and I'm able to meet you guys in person. Absolutely. You're welcome in North Carolina anytime, so thank you again. Thank you so much, Chris. Now, that was a fun conversation with Allie. Her energy, wow, just through the roof. I knew it was going to be fun from the first time we when we met together and were brainstorming. I was like, all right, this is going to be something else. So for the next generation out there, that's what we're looking for is that type of energy, that type of commitment. So I hope you enjoyed it. Just take some notes and follow Allie. Make sure you check out the show notes there so you can get find out how to connect with her because I'm telling you, some of the drawings that she's doing, phenomenal. So I highly encourage you to do that. Remember to send us your war stories. We really want those. Allie's got a few. I know there's a lot of them out there because we just want to highlight the cool stuff that's happening in industry. And, you know, a lot of this stuff, what are you sitting around the dinner table talking about? That's what we want to be sharing on the show. So you can check out the show notes for the links on how to submit those. And finally, if you can give us a five-star rating and write a short review, that would, do a, that would really help the podcast grow. So thank you again. And remember, keep asking why.